What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on part three in our series of the SSI Boat Diver Specialty Program. And today we're going to talk a little bit about how we get on a boat or how we board a vessel, the proper etiquette when you're on the vessel, and of course even dress and procedures. And we really hope this video series helps you out becoming a better diver and staying safe when you're out on a dive boat. But please make sure you you're seeking out proper training from your local SSI training center and that way you're going to have proper training to dive safely from a dive boat. So with that being said, let's jump into chapter three. Now, boarding a vessel can be somewhat difficult, and I like to tell my students, hey, make sure you show up anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour before the vessel is actually going to set sail. This way, you've got plenty of time to make sure you're properly ready and your equipment's ready as well, because once that vessel sets sail, there's really no coming back to the dock to pick up things you might left in your vehicle. Now, once we are ready to get on, always make sure that you ask for permission before you get on that boat. Ask the captain or the dive master of the crew and say, hey, can I say get on the boat are you ready for me now some charters are actually going to assist you they will assist you getting your gear on some charters will say hey we don't really want to touch your gear make sure you ask that question before you just get on the boat they may have specialized areas or specific areas where you are to place your gear that way it can be efficient for everybody on board now once you are on board make sure you keep your things stowed away properly make sure you keep it nice and secured because you don't want that stuff rolling around possibly even rolling off the boat as well so make sure you keep everything secure Secure. Now, there are some charters out there that will actually set your equipment up for you. If you ask them, they'll set it up. They'll take your BC, your reg, and your tank, and they'll set it up for you. However, if you choose to do it yourself, simply tell them no thank you, and you can set it up yourself. Just remember, they are there to help if you need help. They're not going to overtake you whenever you're on a charter. Now, as far as personal vessels, whether it's yours or, say, a buddy or a family member's, you still want to make sure that you get there in plenty of time. Maybe their vessel is not necessarily set up for diving. If it's a fishing boat, there may not be enough room for a lot of different dive gear. So one of the things I like to do on personal vessels is go ahead and pre-set up my equipment on land, and then I can walk onto the vessel with it actually on my back. I don't have to set it up when that boat's rocking and rolling. And there may not be a lot of room, say, for a dive bag, a box, your equipment, and tank. So if you've got it pre-set up, it's a nice small package and you can keep it nicely stored away or stowed away until you're ready to use it. Just make sure your vessel is going to be adequate enough for you to safely and officially dive off of before you take it out there in open water and try to dive off of it. Now, we did mention in an early chapter about different terminologies, and one of those terminologies, of course, is the head. The head is basically the bathroom of the vessel. And a cool little fun fact for you, a lot of charters will tell you if it doesn't go through your body, it's not going in the head. So what we're talking about here, of course, is paper products. You need to know how to properly dispose of those if, say, you do need to go to the restroom when you're on that vessel. Now, if you're down in the head, this typically is one of the worst places to go if you start feeling seasick. So you want to make sure that you're staying up where there's a lot of fresh air circulating. However, if you do need to head, don't be afraid to go down there, use the head, and of course come back out. They're usually not the best smelling on the vessel, but they are nice when you actually need it. Just make sure you're disposing of paper products in the appropriate manner because a lot of times the waste of a vessel actually goes out into the water. So you want to make sure that you're not putting paper products or other litter out into the waterway if you need to use the head. Now, proper boat etiquette comes with a lot of respect. you got to understand, the boat captain is the law of the land. What he says goes on a vessel. Even if you paid to be there or if you didn't pay to be there, that boat captain has full authority when he's on board. And typically, it's going to be his boat anyways, so he's going to have full authority. If he tells you not to go, say, into the engine area, don't go in the engine. If he tells you not to go into the cabin area, don't go into the cabin area. If he simply tells you, hey, you're not going to dive today, it's my boat, it's my rules, then guess what? You are not going to dive today. And I have been on those vessels where the boat captain has turned the boat around, took us back to shore, and got the problem child off the vessel. So you want to make sure that you're showing respect when you're on that vessel. And also listen to the crew itself. If a dive master says, hey, we only allow this, please understand they only do that for safety concerns for the entire group. As we stated in earlier chapters, there's different vessels that you can go get on. If you want a more private charter that lets you do a little bit more than what, say, a cattle boat, then that's where the research comes in and you can call and ask them, what do you allow? 
Boat charters are no different than your local training centers. They are ran by insurance companies. There are certain rules that they must follow, just like there are certain rules you must follow when you're on a dive charter as well. So the next part of this chapter we're going to talk about is making a proper dive plan. Now, this is where you and your buddy are going to sit down and plan your individual dive. Even if you're on a charter where there might be 10 to 15 divers and you got one dive master leading the entire group, it's still going to be you and your buddy and you need to have your own individual plan. Maybe the dive master says you're going to have an hour bottom time, but based off your personal breathing rate, you might only have 30 minutes of bottom time. So you and your buddy are going to plan that out. Now, if you're a solo diver, I would highly encourage you that if they allow you to dive off their boat or their vessel in a solo situation, that you present your dive plan to the dive master and the captain himself. That way they can have a better understanding of what your profile is going to be underwater. This of course is just to keep you safe and in the emergency situation where you do not come back on board, they can have a better understanding of where you are at when you're underwater and what your dive plan was and what your gas management plan as well. So please make sure that if you are solo diving, you present your plan to the boat crew as well, especially the captain who once again is over control of the entire vessel. Now, in the last chapter, we did talk a little bit about being seasick and things like that. There are things that you can do to prevent if you forget to take Dramamine. Once again, you can eat proper uh, foods. You can make sure that you are staying well hydrated. Stay in the areas where you're going to have fresh air. And you want to try to stay about midship. You see, if that boat's rocking and rolling, that midship is not really moving. Just the bow, the front end, and the stern's going to be moving. So make sure you stay with fresh air. Make sure that you're about midship area. And make sure you're staying well hydrated. And that'll go a long ways to help you prevent seasickness or if you do get seasick it'll help bring you out of it as well. So now that we're on board and we've got our gear put together we did our pre-dive safety check when is the appropriate time to actually get dressed? Meaning, when should I be putting on a wetsuit and things like that? Well, you need to ask that local charter. Ask the captain or the dive masters, hey, how long of a boat ride am I going to have before I need to be ready to go diving? You definitely don't want to put your wetsuit on and overheat throughout the boat ride to the dive destination. So make sure you ask them when is going to be an appropriate time to dress. Typically, what I'll do on charters, I'll put my wetsuit up to my waist and kind of tie it off, but I won't put the top part on until I'm actually at the dive site maybe even five to ten minutes out because I don't want to overheat but then again you don't want to wait to the very last minute when that boat's sitting here rocking and rolling and you're trying to get dressed for that specific dive so make sure you're asking the boat captain and the local crew of whatever charter system you're going to be used when's going to be the appropriate time to dress out prior to diving now the pre-dive is very, very important. Whether the boat captain is giving you a briefing or say the dive master who's gonna be leading your dive, it's very, very important. And you may actually get several different pre-dive briefings. You might get one from the captain who's gonna be over the boat and how the vessel's gonna work. You might be getting one from the dive master who's leading the overall group and he's gonna tell you about the dive itself. And you may be getting a third briefing from your local instructor. If you're out on a dive charter doing a class, then of course you're gonna hear a briefing from your instructor as well about what skills are going to be done and how they're going to be completed when underwater. And there's a lot of different briefings that may be going on. Make sure you are listening during this time frame. Don't be setting up your cameras. Don't be talking to your buddy. All that needs to be done at a separate time. Make sure you're listening to that briefing because the briefing is just there to keep you safe. If you need to, take notes. Take your slate, write it down. That way you don't even have to think about it. When you're underwater and you're coming back up, you can simply look at your slate and know exactly what to do when you get back out of the water. So please make sure you're listening to the briefings prior to heading out on a day of diving. Now that we're all ready, the last thing to do is, of course, get dressed up. We need to get our exposure suits on, whether it's a wetsuit or a rash guard or even a dry suit. Then we want to make sure that we get our equipment on, and then we want to put our fins on. Fins tend to be the very last thing we do. Now, some charters will allow you to put your fins on and kind of shuffle step to the edge of the vessel. Some charters will tell you to walk to the back of the vessel prior to putting your fins on. You really need to listen during the briefing stage to see what they actually recommend when you're on that vessel. Now, I would tell you this, make sure that you're staying safe when you do this. If that boat's rocking and rolling, get your buddy or a dive master to help you put your gear on so that you don't actually tip over or fall and actually injure yourself while getting dressed. Same thing with a wetsuit. If you need help zipping up, let somebody on that vessel help you zip up. Make sure you're respecting others during this time and that you're not invading their space. So make sure that you can do it in a smaller space, especially on cattle boats. There's not a lot of room on there. So as you're gearing up, make sure you're not overtaking someone else as you gear up. 
So guys, that's going to do it for chapter three in our series of the SSI Boat Diver Specialty Course. And we really hope this video helps you out, as all these videos in this series, on becoming a more efficient and safer diver when you're out there diving. But please make sure that you are getting proper training from your local SSI boat diving instructor before you go out and try to enjoy a day on the lake or on the ocean or wherever it is that you're going out chartering. Guys, stay tuned. We've got two more videos left in this series, and we really think it's going to help you pass your SSI Boat Diver Final Exam. We also think it's going to make you a safer and more efficient diver as well. So until our next video, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.